Okay, so for all the all of the listeners listening, all the watchers watching, welcome back to another episode of for of forbidden authenticity within. I'm not sure what what at uh, what episode this is going to be, but I am extremely excited. I'm I've been looking forward to having um and having Andrew on for some time now and then i shot him a message about a week ago and uh we were just talk we were just we were just talking about like when when i when i see someone and when i watch someone's content on youtube or online somewhere i take in their thoughts and i take in their their deepness and the way they live their lives just from that one uh, just the input not being able to output anything I start to build them up in my head um, so the first the first few seconds I was just sharing with Andrew that I feel a bit I feel a bit anxious right now but I I know with um, with how how uh, how authentic I'm willing to share and how authentic i feel already this conversation is going to be that that will just fade away like it always does what caught my attention with andrew is is he and his wife don live in a 24 7 dom sub relationship and please correct me if i use any wrong terminologies on that and okay sweet and what caught my attention with that is stuff is stuttering and premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction and social anxiety and all of these things from my experience and what i've helped people in the past overcome is it's mainly a it's mainly a it's mainly a role disorder meaning it's the role that you take on in that moment that causes this because nobody stutters when they're in a room by themselves it's only when they are in a certain interaction with somebody it's not with everybody with friends sometimes they 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 don't stutter because they the role that they have in that Anyway, this is going to, I'm going to go in depth in that. So what caught my attention with Andrew is not so much of the fact that um, um, Andrew and Don are in a 24-7 dom-sub relationship, even though I am interested in that, but it's about the... I'm just so interested, so interested in exploring um, the whole why, what drew you to, to, um, to embodying the, the more masculine leading characteristic traits as like a 24 seven thing. What was the why for that? And how that has kind of impacted your life, and so so many more tan so many more tangents on that. So anyway, that's what got me interested in Andrew, and I'm so excited that he's here. So, Andrew, what do you feel is the some of the most important things, or the most the things you value the most about yourself that you like you you like uh you like other people to 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 know um that this is the person you 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 are how would you explain that that's a great question thank you um you know the i talk a lot about values and so i love that you led with that question because everything in my life really does hinge on values and on knowing what my values are and also in this relationship 
what our values are that I'm leading us from and towards. And so when it comes to me as a man, my highest value is truth. And, you know, I value things like truth and integrity. I love the the title of your podcast, Authenticity, is one of my highest values. So is freedom. But also, so is fun. Like, I like to have a good time. And when it comes to stepping into the role of, of a dominant place in a relationship, you know, you mentioned like the role, like playing the roles and how that can throw people off in terms of some of the, the stuttering that you talk about and, and Mm -hmm. other, um, other ways that that kind of disorders your life. Being in the role of the masculine is about being order. It's about being the creator of order and structure. And when you can line up your inner life, your your values and who you are, what you stand for. You know, there's an old country western song that says you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. You have to know what you stand for, who you are, and then be able to live that in all of the parts of your life. And this is what where dominance and that word comes into play because for me in the way I see it, everything about dominance is about bringing the world around me into line with what I see as true and authentic and right and to create structure and order that allows the world around me to live in line with what I see as truth. And so that's how I approach every part of my life, including the dominant submissive relationship with my wife. But it's the same thing with how I approach my work. It's the same thing with how I approach fitness. It's the same thing with how I approach everything in my life truth comes first and then i'm never playing a role because i'm just being who i am wow so i have a lot of things that that were coming up for me when you were sharing that um during when i'm talking with you i i feel like i i will have to interweave how stuttering and this disorders play a play a role in this and the first thing that that comes to my mind is when you said i believe it was something all something along the lines of dominance is having a clear vision of of the world or having clear clear a clear vision of your diet your direction or how things should be and bringing things all uh making things all make things aligned with that was it some something along that line right because if i really believe that i'm connected to the truth if i believe that i stand for what is right and my values are that strong within me, then it's, it's my duty to make order in my life first and inside myself first to bring myself into line with those values, to really be that guy, and then to go forward and to lead in a way that brings that truth out into the world in whatever ways, anything I touch, I need to leave it better than I found it. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I already know this is going to go very deep. So one thing that I I would like to share about myself is that I have found I, I stutter, I stutter the most with men who are done with men who are done with men who are dominant. It's not even close. It's not even close. It's like, it's like that's my kryptonite in a way where and you mentioned the like I've done a a, a, a lot of thinking of, of a lot of thinking about this and what I have realized is 
dominant men or high status men or men who are cert men who are cert men who are, men who are certain they have a strong sense of reality they have a very strong frame of how things should be and i like i can feel that in somebody i can feel that in an interaction if somebody is able to if someone's like a bit flaky with their thoughts or if someone is like it's just very clear i i feel it it's a i feel it and that makes me question my reality not always but that's why i tend to get unsure of the words that i'm saying sometimes it feels like the words i choose and the way i speak and when i speak and how fast i speak have to align with the strongest frame in the conversation and if someone has a stronger frame than me it feels like the safest thing to do emotionally is try to assume what that strong frame wants me to speak like and that puts extra pressure on me puts extra tension on me but the the catch to this is when I'm speaking to someone like you, who the frame is, and you've ver and you ver you've verbal you verbalized this, and also in sub communications, just the way you wait for me to finish my sentence, the frame is take as long as you want, like it doesn't matter. There's no rules here. And then it's like, oh, like, even though that's a stronger frame, it allows me to kind of fall into myself. But that's just a, a little thing that I wanted to add. I have a few questions with that. But the first thing I'll just share is, um, or the first thing I'll ask is, did anything come up for, did anything come up for you while I was sharing that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking that. Because the thing that you kind of mentioned is your kryptonite. Mm -hmm. I see it really as your greatest strength. Mm -hmm. The one thing that that nobody gets about dominance and about being a dominant figure in life. And this is the same thing if you're in a relationship with a woman, if you are trying to be a leader in a job, like whatever, whatever it is, if you're trying to be a, a dominant figure in your life. We tend to, as men, we tend to think that it's all about doing. Like, what are we doing to her? Are we doing stuff to her? Are we taking charge and telling people what to do? And that's like that's the assumption that a lot of people make when they hear the word dominant, because it implies action. It implies doing something. Mm -hmm. But in order to really be truly dominant, we also have to be emotionally strong and sensitive. And the ability to feel other people, like you clearly can, like you can read people, you're very attuned to the energy, you know, talking about things like subcommunication. So when, when we are dominant figures as men, and we're also emotionally sensitive, which means our hearts are open. We've dropped all of the walls around our hearts so we can really receive feedback and information and in response to how we're leading. Like we go out there into the world, we do something, and then there's a reaction, there's a response to it. And we have to be attuned to that response and reaction in order to lead forward with the most positive result in mind if we want to continue moving towards our values instead of just doing stuff and getting our way we have to be able to listen and feel just as equally and this is how men are built is with receptive hearts that this is where we receive back from mm -hmm. when we go out 
and take charge. We receive back in our hearts. We're made this way. It's a feature of masculinity that everybody misses because it's like, we think we have to be all spine. This is David Dita who said this in the introduction to the way of the superior man. Uh, we're either all spine and no heart or we're all heart and no spine. And one of them is a tyrant and a brute and the other one is a weakling. But if we can be both, if we can be all spine and all heart, then we can be strong in the emotional realm and in the physical realm and just be good with where we're at rather than needing to compare ourselves to anyone else. Because then, you know, now when you're speaking, I'm receiving and just hearing you and listening. And when I'm speaking, you're just hearing me and listening. And we aren't two people trying to figure out who's in charge here. We're two people sharing ideas and seeing what's there for us to integrate in our own life, in our own heart, so that when we go out and, and take action, maybe we're a little bit better for having had this conversation. Mm. So there's, there's a humility and, a, and an open heartedness to dominance that everybody misses. Wow, like I can't tell you the the um the amount of things that every time you speak, there's just like every five seconds, I'm like, I gotta write that down. I have a question about that. I gotta write that down. I have a question about that. Um, but one thing that and I completely, completely feel that. And I just want to even before I say this, I just want to really give grat give grat give gratitude for you because i can definitely already say that just experiencing the i don't know how long it's been i really don't know it could have been 5 minutes it could have been 15 uh just experiencing these minutes with you with somebody that i some someone who i look i look up to to be able to feel the permission to just not like to 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 feel like we're in a realm of there's no competition there's no competing and to make that extremely clear and to feel that and to like emotionally feel that 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 that's that this isn't some um power game that that that, that, that wasn't even what i was going to say at the first what i want what i want what i wanted to say is just having a space to talk and emotionally feeling like the complete permission with someone I I look up to in and in, in and of itself I feel is very is very is very healing and boosting up. The question that came to mind was that I thought of before this podcast. I usually don't think of questions because I like to just do it all in the moment. But I feel like this this is very important for a lot of people and it has been for me and it is for me is that in your journey in becoming this more dominant leading man Are you able to, or not? Are you able to? I'll just ask broad. I'll just ask broad. I'll just ask broadly and see what comes up. How has your your male friend? How has your male friendships been affected, if they have been affected? It's a good question, um, and I would say even broader than just male friendships, but this it's affected every relationship that i have 
all the way down to family relationships um, and everywhere in between. Because a, any sort of growth where we're becoming something better than we were, we are like, we're growing, like we're getting bigger. We're getting, we're taking and putting conscious effort into improving ourselves. And most people don't do that. So when I've gone through this myself, as I grow and change, become more authentic, become stronger, I don't play into the, like the petty gossip, like little political battles that people play. I just don't engage with it and I don't have interest in it. I've seen more and more how much people tend to really rely on that sort of thing to have anything to talk about at all. Mm. So <clears throat> when we grow and when I've grown, I've seen myself just fit in less, especially with people that I knew before, because in their minds, in I'm still the person that they used to know. And they're expecting me to be different or to be the same. And I'm not the same. And so their patterns, their old ego patterns are all trying to interact with an old version of me that doesn't exist anymore. And if I'm really committed to being the man that I've grown into, because I have not always been the guy you're talking to here today. <laughs> I, I was, I was very, very different five years ago. And as I've grown into the man that, that I am now and that I really aspire to be, um, yeah, I find that I relate less to people that knew me before. And I've had to become good at letting go of things that don't fit into my life anymore. Old doors. Because clearing out space in my life makes space for something new to come in. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to hold on to all of the relationships from my past, all of the friendships from my past, keep everything the way that it used to be, I can't do that and be different at the same time. So I'm either going to revert back into an old version of me every time that I go around somebody from the past who is expecting me to be who I used to be, or I can let them go if they can't accept and interact with me on the level of who I've become. You speak such no bullshit truth. Like no, there's no ad, there's no ad, there's no, there's no added, like there's no added words that shouldn't even been in there. It's just all pure. Like, wow. That's, that's, um, that's amazing. Um, and it was a very broad question. And the way you answered that was very, very helpful as like truth. And I feel like a lot of people would, would love to, would love to hear that the, or the or the orig the original intention for my question, which just to bring it back a little bit, was was I'll I'll just be direct here is I have found it very hard to create male friendships because in my mind It's, it's very hard for me, or I'll, I'll just say when, so I have friendships in my life that are men, but I don't, I don't look up to them. I don't aspire to be anything like them. So I don't really, I don't really see them as like a friend. They're just like their friend like some somewhere over there but I'm, I'm not like proud to say like this is my friend 
But the contrast is the people I, I would say I would be proud to have as a friend are people that I look up to. And it's often those people I feel the most power, I feel the most power, I feel the most powerless uh, around a strong male that I look up to. It's hard to be myself and it's hard to feel in, it's hard to feel empowered uh, around them. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that because I'm trying to fit into their frame and it's hard to both be in power at the same time if we go out to a, to let's say our 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 a restaurant like if i go out to a restaurant by myself i feel like i am so like in i'm just so in my body i'm so present i'm so i think every girl wants me i just have this like this frame but then when i go to a a restaurant with a guy I perceive as higher status, it's like all that falls. And it's very hard for very hard for me to um not see it as like a frame bat, not see it as a frame bat, a frame battle to try to have a stronger frame than that person. And it's more of a competition with someone who's higher status. And it's hard for me to be like, why why would i hang out with this person if it's always just a competition so the reason why i i asked that was like have have you found it difficult at all um in the journey of becoming more dominant to be around other don to be around other dominant men that you look up to No, because at a certain point, you you realize that you're the only one comparing. One of my favorite stories about this, um, I'm absolutely terrible at golf. Okay? Like, terrible, terrible at the game of golf. But it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I don't take myself seriously at all. Um, I had... A friend who used to live near me who moved away, but he was good at golf at the level where he had played in professional tournaments, like extremely good, had the talent where you could see him on TV if he really wanted to and loved the game enough. And he loved playing golf with me, even though I would take twice as many swings at the ball as him in a round of golf. And I'm hitting the ball in the water and I'm swinging and missing and I'm laughing at myself. And he's just like three strokes and in the hole and onto the next hole. And I'm still back here mowing the grass with my golf clubs. And at the very beginning, I was a little bit intimidated by how good he was. But when he told me like how much he enjoyed playing with me, because everybody in his whole sphere took the game so damn seriously that it wasn't fun and he only ever enjoyed the game because it was fun because he like that was he wanted to just do it for a good time he never wanted to wanted it to be so serious so like i learned through that that people who are really good at something or strong in something they aren't comparing themselves to me they're not they're not looking at me thinking i'm less than and so if i can just be me and go have fun and just be who i am i can fit in with anyone because anyone who is at the top of their game in whatever it is that they do they don't care they're just being themselves mm. They want to be around people who are themselves, not around people who are just as good as them. Mm. And so just being able to be who you are and be comfortable in your own skin and not compare at all is really what, how people, I guess, who are at maybe higher levels than you see yourself as 
they're not sitting there doing any comparison at all. And they want to be around people who are just comfortable in their own skin, not people who are at the same level as them. Like you don't need to, I didn't need to prove myself to this guy we were, I was playing golf with. He didn't want me to, he wanted me to swing and miss and laugh at myself and then pick the ball up and just start again on the next hole. Mm. you know the manosphere the this whole idea of dominance hierarchies that jordan peterson talks about which is true it's real the the high status male thing the alpha male thing like all of this really mind fucks a lot of guys because then they just get into this comparison mode like am i higher status than that guy and what like i, I need to be high status to get women no, you don't. You need to be the number one high status of who you are. You need to figure out who you are and be that all the way. And that's how you become, like, you create your own hierarchy. You create your own status by being the best you that you can be and just being proud of that. I feel that. I definitely feel that. Feel, I feel I feel the truth in that. And I'm gonna re re-watch that because I, I do I do feel like that is the truth of it. And I'm also going to give you a scenario where I found it difficult. So um and this is like not an everyday scenario for the people in my community watching this, but uh, I think about two years ago, I went to my first BDSM party and I was a dom and, and I'm probably going to say some wrong terminology and stuff because I'm like very inexperienced with this, but I I was going as a dom. There was another dom there. Um, so sorry, we we were we were we had a group of people that we met um, at the pre e at the pre e at the pre event, and then we went out for we went out for dinner with like seven people. There's me dom and another guy dom, and then five girls, and he has had a lot of experience in this. Uh, the other dom and he was making all of the decisions of like all right let's go here what time is it all right let's let's leave in five minutes i'll pay he's making all the decisions and in i was also being a dom but i was just like feel like i was just one of the subs i was just like following him because this this was the first the first time i was at like a bdsm thing and i felt extremely powerless so like how can any of these girls want to be submissive to me when they see this guy like leading and in my head i'm like how can two people lead at the same time like like when i think about two dominant men how can they like how is it possible for them to lead equally without um like w without having that that fight of of um frame or that fight of dominance um is it possible for for there to be in your experience is there is it possible for two dominant men to feel equally in power um say say it's you and another friend of yours who's a dominant man out with um you're out with your wife and his wife having dinner is it possible for for you both be completely in your power when one of you decides the restaurant and the other kind of has to follow for for that 
or how does that dynamic work? When you know yourself and you know who you are, letting someone else make a decision who's better equipped to make that decision isn't doesn't feel powerless. It's not a fight over who's going to be in charge. You know, you were in a situation you described there where that other person was very much more equipped to be the one leading that situation. He'd earned it. Practice, experience, time, understanding. And that's where humility comes in when, when you're in a position where like you actually aren't the leader. Like in that case, you weren't the leader. You were there to be a dominant. But this person, if he's been doing doing this for years, he's been engaged in this lifestyle for years, you're probably better off suited by trying to learn from him, watch him, mm -hmm. like be willing to absorb what you can and grow into that energy rather than trying to challenge anything. But when you're in a situation where you have two people who are equally equipped, equally strong, um, if one person's like, hey, let's go here for dinner. If like we're in the situation you described, me and another guy, both of our wives who are both submissives. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, let's go here for dinner. Where my mind is going to go isn't, I need to be the one deciding because I'm a dominant too and I need to challenge him. It's, is that a good idea or not? And in reality, I'm going to go to, like, do I want to go there? Because if it's a good idea and I want to go there, then why would I challenge it? Like, I don't need to force my way to prove anything. I know who I am. Mm. But I'm also going to think about my submissive. I want to think about her. What's the place he suggested? I'm probably going to look at the menu and make sure that there's something off that menu that will be suitable to her, that'll be enjoyable to her something on the menu that I will enjoy and want to eat. If like, if he were to suggest a restaurant that like doesn't meet some of like her dietary needs or my preferences, I might suggest something else. And if you have two people who are both just grounded and they're not in a dick measuring contest over who's the more dominant one. Now we're just in an exchange of ideas. We're not trying to prove anything. And that's where the, like the whole hierarchy thing is just a mind fuck. Mm. Because it's not about trying to be dominant over someone else or dominant in a certain social setting. It's about being dominant in here. It's inner dominance. That's where it, that's where it all comes from. Because when you feel strong, solid, dominant, aligned, grounded, in who you are, what your values are, where it is that you're going with your life. Other people can do whatever they want. Somebody can come up to me and say, like, do this. And I can either tell them to F off or if there's a good reason to do it, maybe I'll do it. Like, I don't need to prove myself to anyone because I know who I am. And that's this whole path to what dominance really is. It's about becoming dominant on the inside, not about proving it on the outside. Because that's then you carry the energy with you. Like, how many people are in CEO roles where they're not making every single decision about every single thing that happens in the company? They don't have to be there, the one like micromanaging everything. They're just in charge. If they need to change something, they will. They'll step up and they'll assert their leadership. But more, more often than not, they are delegating that or they are giving their approval to what other people have decided. Mm. And you know, the picture that I paint of dominance isn't like pushing. It's not a it's not a battle. It's putting my arm around something. And walking alongside of it where I want to take it. But this is like, this is just life. This isn't about proving a damn thing. So if somebody suggests like, let's go to this restaurant or, um, Hey, you should order that drink. I'm just going to take that in 
as information. I'm going to receive it, decide what to do with it, and then take action because I'm not worried about what they think of me. That's also another, I feel the complete truth in that because when you made the comparison to the CEO del delegating the decision making of some aspects, what came to my mind was, and this is related to you saying, it's not dominance over other people, it's dominance of yourself, being able to lead yourself and have dominance over yourself. It's like, if that CEO sees someone make a decision for his comp, sees someone make a decision for his company, and he takes that in as, as this person is trying to assert dominance over me, if that, if he allows it to hit him in that way, then he'll lose that that dominance and that groundedness in himself. But if he perceives it as I still have the control and I'm good, and they can make uh, they can they they can make those decisions, and it's not about me. It. It frames in my mind like if if I'm if I'm out with somebody and they say um all right let's come let's go this way and I just if if I take that as uh, like oh this is this guy trying to assert don trying to assert trying to assert dominance over me now if I follow then I'm losing dominance because I'm in that game but if if I say um, if if it's like um, the game isn't to try to have dominance over him or have dominance over the situation, the goal is to have the dominance over myself, where if he says that, I can clearly and calmly think to myself, do I want to go this way? It allows me not to be in that game of battling so i'm not losing dominance if i do go that way because it was still my decision to go that way yeah and then you're just if you don't want to go that way then it's not like a it's not a contest there either it's just you know what do your thing hope you guys have a good time i'm gonna go this way and you just part ways you don't like it, it's not a win or a loss because you can't win or lose when you're just being yourself. The here's one of the the real keys, Chase, and I think I think you'll really like this concept that any time that we feel powerless, we're going to have some kind of a reaction to that powerlessness. This is like this is the state of submission, by the way. It's giving up authority of your own life to follow someone else's lead that is a very emotional experience submission is inherently an emotional experience because it's taking all kinds of power out of one person's life and putting it in the hands of another so to be emotionally reactive is inherently submissive And to cause an emotional reaction, we somehow have to feel like we are not in control. This is something I've heard Elon Musk say. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked like how he felt about the fact that he was doing so much to change the future of humanity. And he's like, it's that's not even the right question. He's like, I don't feel anything about it. There are things I need to do. There are things I believe to be right and actions I need to take. And I wake up every morning and I do it. And then I go to bed. 
it's not an emotional like feel experience it's like when you uh, from a place of real inner dominance it's it's not an emotional like this isn't an emotional experience of life it's a very grounded solid experience of life mm -hmm. and the more that the more that we step into a role of seeing the truth knowing what our values are having a vision and driving our lives towards it along with anyone who wants to follow the less reactive we get because you know who you are you know where you're going and if this guy wants to go that way and i don't want to cool if that guy wants to go that way and i also want to go that way cool it's not about anything other than me being me and doing what i think is right and best in the moment Hmm. Yes. I already can't wait to watch this back as I know I'm not taking it fully in, but I, from what I am taking in, I feel like the, the fucking the truth in it. Something I, I want to get into. Wow. It's almost already been an hour. Something I, I want to get into is the why you went down this path and to try to kind of sink it in. So people who stutter and people who are dealing with sexual dysfunction um, can understand like really why I, I asked this is because. And I'm, I'm not trying uh, of, I was, I was just going to say, um, I'm not trying to lead you into a certain and lead you into a certain lead you into a certain answer. And then I, I was going to say that, and then I stopped saying it because I'm like, I already know you're going to just answer without where I want you to go. It's just like the truth of it. So um, anyway, um, the reason why I I asked the why. This is going to be a little bit of an ex, ex, explanation is because I've seen you say on your YouTube that, or Instagram, maybe both, that you are an extremely sensitive person or you're a sensitive man. And I definitely am as well. There's a stat somewhere um, that... 80% of people who stutter or HSPs are highly sensitive people and HSPs only make up like 20% of the world. So just by the stats, it would make sense that I would be a highly sensitive person, but I know not even just from that, not just from that, not just from that label, I'm highly, highly sensitive and For the first 95% of sexual experiences, 98% of sexual experiences, I either couldn't get hard or I would bust within like 10, 20, 30 seconds. And what I realized is the moment I... And the girl that I was seeing at the time, we went into the far end spectrum of dominance. So I went full, I went fully into the dominant embodiment and she went fully into the surrendering to the following. And I had full control over everything. I, I had full control in when I would bust and I wasn't thinking like, could I, could I get hard or not? And what I realized, this is going to be a bit tricky to tie in. What I realized is what was causing the premature ejaculation was a heightened sensitivity 
to what I thought she wanted and always in every second trying to maximize her pleasure. And if I wasn't maximizing her pleasure, if if her moans dimmed, then I would feel this strong sense of failure, this strong sense of I'm not worthy. And knowing this, it brought so much pressure to per to per to perform in the bedroom, which of course, of course, anyone would bust quick with that or couldn't get hard. The moment I went into the the role of I am going to lead you wherever the fuck I want to lead you. Like I'm so tapped into what I want, but I'm also open to, to her. I'm not like closed. I'm not closed off, but I'm so tapped into my primal instincts of what I, what I want to touch and what I want to feel and what positions I want to have and what I want you to do. I was so connected to that and not, any more connected to an extreme sensitivity to to how she's feeling and always maximizing that, but rather being connected to myself now of how do I want to express myself? How how what would bring me the most pleasure? I have found that allowed me, that allowed the sensitivity that was causing the the busting quickly to 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 hold a new place not in not in fear but in actual like this moment and staying connected to this moment and i found that was her like best sexual experience ever too and this what has drawn me to this whole uh dynamic of dominant and submission is because after that sexual experience and more and more i felt deeply healed i felt deeply like healed in a way i've never felt before i guess it's a two-part question is what came up for you when i shared that and two um why what caused you to to go down this this route of dominant submission maybe it's tied in but when we first started going down this road it was really something that i had kind of a long held deep hidden shameful desire about wanting to be in this kind of a relationship that i had never spoken up about or shared i just kind of kept it hidden and assumed that it wasn't possible and I knew that when I took the lead, when I took charge in our relationship, that things went well. Things always went better for me, for her, for us, whether it was sexually or just in planning and day-to-day life. When she let go, when there was one person leading and we weren't trying to to figure out who was going to be in charge, everything just went better. So when I asked my wife after eight years of marriage to become my submissive, that was what I laid out at the beginning was I want this to be like these times when it's really good. I want to make it like that, but all the time. That was how I kind of presented what submission was to her because she did had no idea what I was talking about. So what happened over time Chase was that as she worked on letting go of all of the control that she held every time that she needed to let go of something she needed me to be able to be strong enough to hold it so she could release it and so this became for us this back and forth of she would kind of become more submissive and then need more dominance from me. And I would have to find a way to step up or I would grow in my own inner strength. And then I would kind of call her to let go of some of more to follow me more deeply. And so we, we started out like this wasn't a bedroom thing for us at first. This was a life and relational thing. Mm. It crossed over into the bedroom later on in the, 
in the process. It wasn't so much right at the beginning. And, you know, so over time, I was just led and called to become stronger, to to be better than I was, because she continued to have more experiences of the joy of being able to set down control and let go of decision making and just want more and more of that. And so I was just called constantly to be better. And also the more that she would do that, the more connected she would get to her own inner femininity, the more she would also see right through my bullshit and call me out and call me forward when I was not in integrity. And so she can like, she continued to call me forward. And that's where this connects back to the sensitivity thing. Because dominance in the physical realm, like in what you can see, it looks like I just boss her around. But there's a mutual surrender to dom sub relationships. I have to surrender in the like emotionally. I have to like my submission is emotional to her because mm. now I'm her emotions are gonna are coming out of her more and more and more as she lets go more and more. Like I said before, this becomes like a very emotional experience for her as she lets go of control and follows my lead instead of doing it her way whether that's sexual or relational doesn't matter it's the same thing and so i have to let the walls down around my heart where i'm not trying to please her i'm not trying to prove myself to her i'm not trying to figure out what she wants and give it to her i'm going somewhere and taking her with me and then what you were talking about in the shift that you felt is really what I call attunement mm -hmm. rather than being like trying to be perfect. You're just being attuned to the truth, to the reality of what's actually going on so that you can adjust and continue to go where you want to go with the truth of the moment of her emotional expression of her moans, of her enjoyment, of her pleasure like if something's not working, you just kind of adjust to something else rather than going, getting in your head about it. And I think this is probably a great place to wrap up, wrap this up because this all comes back to, we have to be in our bodies. We have to, we have to get out of our heads. We've got to get out of here and spinning thoughts and settle in to our body so we can be present to really be there and to witness like she's not enjoying herself. Okay. What can I make out of this? What can I create given the reality of where this situation is right now? How can I make this fun? How do I change this up? What is she feeling? What do, what do I see that she's needing? I don't need to ask her. I don't need to try to like force anything. I can just tune in, attune to her, to feel her, and really let go of the need to please her and instead just desire to give to her. Mm. And so you can't do that from your head. You can't do that when you're spinning around these thoughts of I'm not good enough or... Um, what do I need to do? Or what was that technique that I read that you do like this thing three times and you do that thing three, like all of the different shit that we can get in our heads about. We just have to drop it, take a deep breath and get down in here, like be in the moment. Like when you touch her, if you're going to touch her with your hand, have all of your attentiveness, your energy, your love, your desire, have all of that energy in your hand not in your head you aren't thinking it like bring all of your like all of you into the sensation of touch as you lay it on her like i got you come here sit down 
and you just guide with strength and with clarity while being very tuned into her. What's going on? Come on, let's move this way. And you don't need to be forceful. You don't need to be dominating in the, the way that people would think about that nearly as much when you can just be in your body and be attuned to her and be present and be grounded in the moment. One hundred percent. I, I, I feel there's, I feel the depth and I feel the truth and I feel the the amount of life that you've you would have had to live to say this with your experience from your experience, because. Uh, just quickly, and then we'll wrap it up. Is I read the book, um, The Way of the Sieve, with the Way of the Sieve, The Way of the Superior Man, a few years ago, and then also like a year uh, ago. And each time I did, it like boosted me up, but I also feel like it kind of fucked me up too, because now I had like a script in my head of like, this is how you should act. And when she does this, you do this. And when she does this, when she feels this way, you act this way. And it was like, it caused me to be very in my head and not trusting myself. Like when this happened, instead of looking inward and saying, okay, how, how, how do I feel? And how do I want to lead from that? It's more like, okay, what did that book say to do? Okay, I'll do that. And it always, it always messed things up. It always just, it always made me quit on the whole thing because I like it got me so in my head. But for you to speak these truths that I know come from experience that may be in books, but it comes from your experience. I'm extremely grateful that I get to experience that firsthand. And I feel the power and I feel the depth and I feel the truth in that. And I'm at the beginning of the journey of, of the path of becoming more dominant and possibly, possibly having a relationship that is more dom sub. I'm, I'm not sure I'm at the beginning of the journey, but even though that's the case, I feel the truth of everything that you're saying and I'll feel it more when I go down this path more and there won't be so much thought. It'll be more feeling, but um, I want to thank you so much, Andrew, for come for coming on and for everyone that was listening. If you stutter, if you have sexual dysfunction, the best way I learned to heal that and overcome that isn't by being told this is what you have have to do to stop busting quick. It's by hearing somebody talk about something else or hearing a different idea and making sense of this truth in my life as a byproduct of it. It's not someone didn't tell me this is what you need to do. It, it had to make sense to myself and to my emotions and learn it as a byproduct of learning something else. I had to make it make sense for myself. So that's why I love to bring on guests like this that aren't direct, aren't directly connected to this is how you overcome stutter, this is how you overcome stuttering, but understanding truths that you can bring into your life in other areas. So, Andrew, um, where just what are you doing in your life right now? How are you helping people and where can people find you? InfiniteDevotion.com is the best place to find us. We have links to our Instagram, our YouTube, our podcast on there, where our podcast is all Dawn and I talking back and forth about what our dominant submissive dynamic is like. We have a lot of stuff on our blog and we do different courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentorship work all the time. So people can find anything that we do there on InfiniteDevotion.com. Perfect. And I will link all 
of their links in the show notes and also on the page right here. So it'll be very clear. Um, again, Andrew, thank you so much for your time. I, 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 I really appreciate you coming on and I, I am definitely, I feel a more authentic, true, elevated person from having spoken with you. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate you having me here, Chase. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Until next time. See you later, Andrew. See you later.